Hello, Mr. Thompson here with a video math lesson on negative indices or negative powers and exponents and so forth. Um, so, as with all the index laws, um, which this is one of, we'll um, start with a little scenario here. So we have x squared over x to the fifth. Uh, and we'll look at um, evaluating this a couple of different ways. The first way we'll do is, is with our um, uh, index law 2. All right, with, uh, we'll take these exponents, these indices, and we'll subtract them, right? 2 minus 5. You have to do the top one minus the bottom one, right? Important note there with, for index law 2. So we get 2 minus 5, which of course is negative 3. So uh, this expression ends up being x to the negative 3, and that's a little different, negative, a negative number there in the, in the index of power, which of course is what we're talking about. Well, to figure out um, what that sort of means, let's look at this a different way. Um, before we knew about index law 2, we might have taken this uh, a different approach with this problem here. We might have written out that uh, x squared is x times x, and x to the fifth is x times x times x times x times x, right? Five x's multiplied by each other, right? And, of course, we can now cancel, right? We have these two on the top, cancel with two on the bottom which will leave us with a fraction, right? We've canceled everything off the top, so uh, in place of those x's, we're going to put a 1. And on the bottom, we have 3 x's, right? So that's going to be x cubed. So here we see that we've looked at the same problem two different ways, right? One way, we got x to the negative 3, and one way, we got 1 over x cubed. So this brings us to our last index law regarding what we do with when we get a negative power like this. We can actually make it positive by putting the whole, this whole index notation, this whole thing, basically, underneath the bottom of a fraction, right? Or basically swapping it to the other side of the fraction, right? So the, uh, the index law looks like this. Um, if you have an, a base to a negative exponent, then you can rewrite that as 1 over the same base to the positive exponent. Right? Um, and of course you can you can do it the other way. If you have a negative exponent on the bottom, you can make it positive by putting it up on the top. Right? You swap the sign, the negative or positive of the exponent, and you can swap whether it's on the top or the bottom of a fraction. Important to note that for all of these, it's important that a is not 0 because if you have 0 to a power, that's going to be 0, and you can't have 0 on the bottom of a fraction. So important that we make that note. Okay. So let's look at a couple of examples. We're going to write the following expressions with only positive indices, right? Positive exponents, positive powers. So here we have a negative 2. There's a negative 2 and a negative 4. We'll do, these are two different problems. Start with this first one. And basically, um, there will be times when you'll have problems like this and you need to do a bunch of simplifying first or whatever, but um, these ones, you pretty much all you have to, all we're dealing with is this negative exponent. So we see we've just got a 3. We're going to keep that with, our, um, with, the, with the problem. We'll just bring that along with us. And then we look at this a, and it's got a negative exponent, a negative index. So we're going to take that and put it on the bottom of a fraction. So we'll make this into a fraction put the a on the bottom, and instead of negative 2, we'll put positive 2, right? And then we just stick the b3, b to the third in there, because um, that was positive, it's just going to stay, right? And that one's done. There's no more simplifying or canceling or anything. Next one, we've got x to the negative 2 over x to the negative 4. So we want to make this positive and this positive, the negative 2 and the negative 4. So it's still going to be a fraction, right? And instead of on the top, x is then going to be on the bottom, and then, of course, it will be positive 2. And instead of on the bottom, the y will be on the top with a positive 4. Okay, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Of course, as I said, sometimes these will be combined with a bunch of other um, simplifying and, and ind index rules that you'll need to follow and things like that. But that's the, um, the main idea. And since this is the uh, uh, final video in a series on the index laws, um, here is... A uh, comprehensive list of all the index laws as our current textbook has them listed 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, as well as the zero power and uh, the negative indices um, rules. Okay, so
best of luck, and see you next time.